What is arbitration and how does it work? I'm Kevin Newper. I'm an attorney at Newper and Covey, and I want to talk to y'all today about something called arbitration, which uh, if you have tried to sue someone recently or decided you want to sue someone, you may have heard of this because uh, a large percentage of companies in America are forcing people to instead of go to court and do what you would traditionally get to do where you get in front of a jury, you get to go prove your case, you now have to do something called arbitration. Uh, this is kind of a um, smaller, uh, shortened, narrowed down version of going to court. Instead of doing it in court, you do it in front of a private um, uh, arbitrator is what they're called, which is someone who is kind of the replacement for a judge. They're usually lawyers. Sometimes they actually used to be judges. Um, they get paid by an arbitration association, which is kind of a nonprofit um, that um, runs the arbitrations, administers them, and then this person who's the arbitrator is the one who actually decides your case instead of 12 people who are a jury of your peers. Now, I'm a lawyer. I don't, I don't like that this is being done to people, and a lot of lawyers don't like this. This is something that the Supreme Court over the last 15, 20 years has um, really changed the law on the subject of, of arbitration. Um, if you ever go online, so so where's this coming from? Um, if, if you go read the details of your contracts, which you never actually check, I never check them, like nobody reads every contract they sign because you would spend every m m minute of your life reading terms of service on websites or whatever. Um, in, in many of them, if not most of them now, um, there is buried deep in with, within the 20, 30, 40, however many pages of the agreement, uh, a clause that will say that you don't get to go to court anymore. You don't get to file class actions. You don't get to sue us. Instead of going to court, you have to do, do this private arbitration, which will be uh, done before the arbitrator. You no longer have the right to a jury. You no longer have a right to the court process or the court system. Uh, it's something that does not benefit normal people. Um, companies do it because they don't want to get sued. They don't want class actions. They want uh, to basically have the right to sort of sweep everything under the rug and do it in private. It's not always private, <laughs> but uh, they don't want the court process because the court process costs a lot more money and it can reveal a lot of things that an arbitration can't because a judge will order them to give, uh, like say you're suing a company, that company will have to give its emails about whatever is relevant to the lawsuit. They'll have to go dig through their documents. Their, um, anybody who is involved in whatever you're suing about will have to go under oath into deposition to talk about it, to swear to what happened. They don't like this. It, not only is it expensive, but it starts showing if a company is a bad actor, it shows the things they're doing. So maybe 15 or 20 years ago, and, this, and the law has been around for a long time, uh, but it used to be that these agreements were very hard to enforce. You had to be very clear that, that, that you know, you were agreeing to an arbitration. The person who was waiving their rights to go to court had to, to there, there were a lot of ways to get around it. The Supreme Court, maybe 15 or 20 years ago, started chipping at that. They decided, hey, we want to make this the way we do things now and save money, I guess, and not go to court anymore. And so every time someone tried to challenge one of these agreements, a plaintiff, um, the Supreme Court kind of knocked them down. Not every time, but almost every time. And, and in a lot of ways, they really just made it very hard to um, do these arbitrations. Or, or sorry, very hard to go to court. They, when, when you said, oh, I didn't read that, they, they said, doesn't matter. When, when you said, that company hit it, doesn't matter. That company, um, you know, it's, it's an unfair agreement, doesn't matter. If it says arbitration, they said, we have a strong policy of making things go to arbitration if it's in the contract somewhere. So for a period of time, this actually shut down a lot of lawsuits where a lot of ability of anybody to go challenge practices of companies that are abusive, that are uh, really bad for people or even really dangerous for people. And what attorneys like me started doing is saying, oh, okay, <laughs> you asked for it, you're going to get it. <laughs> and, and so instead of doing a class action where you'd have one person sue the company and a class action is where you have um, one person who goes in and says, I want to represent this group of a million people or have many people who um, have been injured somehow by, by your company. And, and I'll be kind of the representative and then we'll go send money to all the individual people. And sometimes, uh, you know, those have been <laughs> good or bad. There's different attorneys. Who, some attorneys have not done a good job with those. Some attorneys have. Um, but they, they, to a large degree, have been shut down or decreased and because companies are saying no you can't do that anymore you got to go every one of you individually has to go one by one by one through these arbitrations attorneys like me have said okay <laughs> we'll go get 300 400 500 people and just do 500 arbitrations in a row which is a costs a lot more money than a class action ever would and can result in much bigger awards and and even to do it costs large amounts of money 
Um, so there's kind of this back and forth. The, the summary of that is there's this back and forth between uh, the plaintiff's lawyers and the corporations that we sue um, as to trying to, you know, they want to use arbitration to keep you from suing them or, at all because most people don't whenever they find out, oh, I can't go to court. Um, and we want to try to uh, find ways to let people sue companies whenever they have been wrong somehow. Um, arbitration is not the end of the world if you have to do it. Uh, we, uh, and ex just as an example, we're doing a ton of people right now arbitrating uh, claims where they bought a car and the, the dealership or the online dealership did not give them the title to the car, sometimes for years. So this is an example of like, why would you want to be able to sue somebody? Uh, you used to be able to sue for this, now you've got to go to arbitration. Um, you probably have never thought, oh, I could buy a car and then not be the legal owner of it two years later. But that's what's been happening to some people recently in the last couple of years um, where dealerships are trying to make money and they just, with COVID and some uh, issues going on they and, and the used car market being really hot, they just started selling cars they didn't actually have the title for. Um, and, and people could not go to court because of these arbitration clauses that are in all the contracts that you sign. So, so we had to go do these all in arbitration. And it's actually worked out pretty well for uh, the clients who are doing this, um, you know, you can still win in arbitration and still get money. It's not as good as a jury, but it's it on. There are advantages to it, which is that it is generally shorter. It is cheaper. It um, it doesn't give you the same kind of pressure that a court case would. But you also don't have to do as much work when you're suing somebody. You kind of just show up for a Zoom hearing and sometimes a Zoom deposition. Um, you're like I am right now, like just on a, you, you know, you, you turn your computer on, start talking, and they ask you questions under oath, and that's kind of all you are really having to do. Uh, and the attorneys are handling the rest. So that's kind of the high level level overview of what this is versus going to court. You are put off into this private system. Now, how does it actually work? And should you ever try to do this yourself? Um, I would say that you probably really can't do this if you're not an attorney. It, it was sort of pitched to everyone. And that's what the Supreme Court, you know, <laughs> took it as is, oh, this is great. Regular people can just go use this and it'll be cheaper. They really can't because and 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 I'll explain kind of how it works which will show you why you can't. First is that you you generally have to follow a set of rules that is very similar to the court rules. Um, there are two main arbitration groups that most companies pick in their contracts because to to make the contract enforceable they kind of have to have at least some basic level of fairness to the consumer who is uh, you know signing up for this. So a lot of companies what they've done is kind of bent over backwards to try to be fair. And so they mostly have picked these two organizations that everybody agrees is, are kind of um, neutral and there's nobody saying oh they're biased or whatever. That's AAA, uh, American Arbitration Association, not not the guys who pick up your car but at the same uh, initials and JAMS which is a, a group of sort of uh, probably better qualified arbitrators honestly because they're uh, the, a large percentage of them used to be judges. Um, and they cost a lot more, but you're not the one paying for it if you're the consumer. And those two groups have both set up rules that are uh, called due process rules that are designed to um, make it so a consumer can come in and do the arbitration without uh, sort of paying a ton or being prejudiced. So you there's the max there's a maximum fee that the consumer can pay. It's usually a couple hundred dollars. Um, the company has to pay all the rest. Uh, the there's limits on what they can do. They can't make you go arbitrate off in Hawaii. If you live in New York, you have to go kind of be within a certain uh, place of your um, of where you live. There's various different rules that make it so they, they can't be one sided against you as a consumer. Um, the problem is, though, that like like the way this actually works, could a regular person actually do it? Um, probably not, because first of all, every company hires a lawyer. I've never seen somebody. Well, not never. I've seen maybe one company try to come in without a lawyer, which doesn't work well. Um, so almost always they're going to have a lawyer. That is very hard for you as a consumer when you're going up against a lawyer and you don't know the rules and they know them backward and forward and you don't know how to sort of present your evidence, but also present the law um, because it works. You know, it's it, it really is kind of a, a, a condensed version of a lawsuit. All the parts of the lawsuit are there. All the, there's motion. You can try to dismiss the arbitration. You can file legal arguments. You can uh, go collect evidence with a deposition. They usually make it sort of a much, much narrower version of it, but that doesn't mean that uh, that a lawyer versus a regular person cannot sit here and try to throw a spammer in the works, as they call it, a wrench in the works. Um, so the, the win rates, if you don't have a lawyer, are actually not that great. <laughs> they're, they're, you know, maybe 20% win rate versus 60 
percent or something if you do have a lawyer. Um, the other problem is that the question becomes what happens if you win? So when you win an arbitration, you go through this process, and how the process works is you kind of have a there's a you file something that is uh, a document that lays out the legal claims that you have to the arbitrator. The arbitrator sets up a call, so everybody goes in and has a call uh, about, hey, how are we going to go through this? The arbitrator does what's called a scheduling order, which says, okay, will there be depositions or not? Will there be document exchange or not? Um, when will it happen? Will, will, we, will there be a motion to try to uh, dismiss the arbitration before it happens? If so, what are the dates for that? Who, when do you file it? When do you reply? What is the date when we're actually going to do the arbitration? And when am I going to write what's called the award, which is a written... Um, sort of decision about what to do. So you go through all this stuff. You go have the hearing. The hearing is now almost always done over Zoom. In my experience, since COVID, everybody, while you're, like nobody wants to go fly somewhere or drive somewhere or whatever. Everybody, it's easier to just, you know, be in your pajamas and, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and go do your uh, Zoom hearing. Not really, but kind of. And um, you do that. Let's say you win. Let's say you win $100,000 in the arbitration or even anything. Um, you can't actually get that money unless the person says, okay, I'll give it to you, which for us is mostly what happens. As attorneys, um, most defendants say, I'll just hand you the money because they know that I'm going to go nuke them if they don't. But if let's say you're not an attorney and you're trying to do this. You have to go to a court after the arbitration to do what's called a confirmation of the award. So the award doesn't get you anything. The award says, I, the arbitrator, have decided that you are owed this and then you have to go to a actual court that will then um, confirm the award and the confirmation the court says okay this award is now turned into a legal judgment and now you can use it to go collect the money that you are owed from the person that you arbitrated against so you have to be able to know how to go to do go to the court do the court filings they can oppose those they could um, they could try to appeal. I will say arbitrations almost never can be appealed against successfully. The law is set up to make it very, very difficult. Um, if your, your arbitrator took a bribe, you can appeal. If they didn't, it's it's really, really hard. Um, there, there, sometimes the contracts say you can appeal to another arbitrator or group of arbitrators, but if they don't say that, then it's it's very, very hard. So you probably can't appeal. You have to go do this confirmation process in a court. Now you've gotten the court to say, let's say you know how to do that. The court says, here's a judgment. This this judgment, a judgment is just an order from the court that says, this person owes me money. Well, what do you do with that? <laughs> right? So if you're a regular person, you probably don't know, well, what do, do I do with a judgment? Um, the answer, if you're a lawyer, is you can go take it. You can go um, start levying their bank accounts. You can garnish their wages. If it's a person, if it's a corporation, you can go find their assets and take them. Um, lawyers like to go use these judgments to go do the most painful way to collect as possible, which is if, if you know, you first go to the guy, the, the corporation, you say, hey, pay it up. And if they don't, you start looking at what uh, what is the most problem that you can do? You go find their, uh, the, the one that's the classic example that, that lawyers do a lot is they go seize the computers at the offices of the company, um, which makes them pay pretty quick <laughs> because you, you can just go back. If they buy new computers, I'll just take those too um, and auction them off at the sheriff's sheriff's office, um, which obviously if you're a company and no one has computers, you have a problem. So you probably don't know how to do that if you're a regular person. So yeah, you could go get your award, but what does it mean if you can't go enforce it? What does it mean if you don't know how to confirm it? Uh, you you could pay a lawyer to do that part, but if you only have a 20% win rate, then uh, it's not that great. So generally, you want a lawyer to do these if you're going to do them. Um, the kind of lawyer that you want uh, is probably a consumer lawyer, is what I would call myself, or a consumer protection lawyer. If you search for that, you're going to find people in your local area who do that. Um, we, we do it in a bunch of states, but uh, Texas, Pennsylvania... Uh, Georgia, California, Hawaii are our current kind of places where we got people, people licensed in. And sometimes you can actually do, as a lawyer, it's kind of interesting. You can go, um, if they, like, say, it doesn't necessarily uh, matter where you are, but where the company is. So if you're in, let's say, Idaho, and there's you, you, there's probably not a lot of, there's actually a lot of states where you have no consumers at all, consumer lawyers at all, or very few. Um, so if you're in Idaho, you may not be able to find a lawyer, but if the company you're suing is in Texas, then I can still go represent you because the lawsuit or the arbitration even is in Texas. Um, 
So that's kind of how do you, how do you find that lawyer? You look at the states where you are and the state where the company is, and you can you can probably find someone to help you with this. Um, hopefully on contingency, which is how we like to do our cases, because um, which is where the attorney um, advances the costs, the attorney gets some percentage of what the win is if they win, and if you don't win, you kind of and sometimes you don't, um, then you just you know the attorney doesn't make any money, which is to me that's fair because. Um, if I don't win, if I'm not good enough to win your case as the plaintiff, then, um, you know, it's fair that I don't make any money. <laughs> so, and, and, and that happens, but if you're a good attorney, you win most of your cases and, or settle most of your cases, and um, then you, you know, that's how you, you only make money if you win. Um, so that's kind of the high-level overview of how an arbitration works, what it is. It, it, the rules are all dependent on what your contract says. They are often very complicated, very hard to read, and which is another part of why you need an attorney. You, uh, many companies require that you send letters to them to start this. They have to be done with a, with a, within a certain period of time. They have to be sent to certain places. Um, you have to do sort of negotiations before the arbitration. They could have all kinds of other rules. Sometimes they're enforceable. Sometimes they're not. Um, all The lawyers kind of just are able to, to figure all that stuff out for you. So that's that's kind of what it is. You're, you are doing a Zoom call <laughs> and if for a day, and you have to go testify. You have to tell the truth. You have to give um, documents that you may have about it. Um, but if you have a dispute with a company, we, like we, we do all kinds of different ones. Any Anybody you could have a dispute with these days will have one. So we see people with uh, problems with their solar panels when they installed them in the house. We see people with these car titling problems, with they bought a car and the car was a, a lemon. They um, just... All kinds of different things could be a reason that you might want to arbitrate. Um, you you probably don't want to arbitrate if it's a nothing kind of claim, but um, many of the companies that have made people go through this process instead of going to court have come to regret it because the upside to the company is it's much cheaper, but the upside to you as consumers is it's also much cheaper, which makes it easier for lawyers like me to go look at someone doing something wrong and say, well, I, you know, I could only do one or two lawsuits, but I can do... 300 arbitrations for in about the same time. So I'm just going to get 300 people and we'll go make them fix what they're doing. So if you've got one that's good, feel free to give us a call or you can go find uh, our website, nupercovey.com. Uh, the spelling, of course, will be very hard, but uh, you can go find that on my YouTube and, and, and go click through to that website if you want to go look at it. Um, so that's, that's arbitration. <laughs>